Hello there, Hal, dear. I heard that you wanted to speak with me. You may enter the Golden Wood, but tread with care, or punishment shall be swift. The Lady Galadriel has called you to her garden, and if she wishes to speak with you, I will take you to her. Very well. Let's go. Jealously do I guard my secrets, not the least of which is my mirror. Still, there are times which require a greater knowledge, and this is one such time. Shadows gather in the east, and the fates of lost friends burns in the heart. So let's find out what this is all about. Ah! I think I found her! Hello? I think we need to give her a proper bow before we speak with her. I know what befell you in the darkness, and that your courage did not fail. I am aware of your kindness to Magor beneath the mountains. You are now held high in his esteem, and he accords you great fondness for your part in his rescue. Strange deeds unravel on the many paths of your journey, for as your footsteps lead you to and fro, I perceive that many feet and are twined with your own. Some of your tales seem to have ended, but unlocked doors many it may have pried open. My mirror show, can show you many things, and you may ask what you will, but heed this before you peer into the waters. Many valuable answers may come unbidden. Look now and see what may be seen. Wonderful. Look into the mirror, Pine Sea, and see what you will. Yeah, I'll see what I will. I think you better prepare to turn down your volume, because usually these things come out to be rather loud. Right? Peering into the mirror. Mithrandir faced his match in Moria, a balrog of Morgoth. Into the depths they fell, then rose again up the endless stair. There they did battle one against the other, and the fire of it was terrible. In the end, Mithrandir threw down the Balrog, though he himself fell into shadow. Yet who is to say what his end might be? Not all hope is yet lost. I think that finally answers the question of what happened to Mithrandir. Why here the Windlord will find Gandalf? if he is to be found anywhere in Middle-earth. Some light is now shed on the riddle. Do you not agree? The clues left behind amongst the foundations of stone begin to form a clear picture at last. Gandalf the Grey strove in Moria with shadow and flame, and they fell, and perhaps rose again. Who had the mastery? It has been said that my eyes see farther than many who are deemed wise. Yet keener eyes we need to pierce the darkness that shrouds Mithrandir from my sight. Who can spy upon Moria from all sides and gain rumor of the fate of Gandalf? Only Gwaihir the Windlord can do this. I saw more than the fate of Mithrandir behind your eyes, Pine Sea. I saw a glimpse of your own fate as well. The ship glides through the water with graceful speed. Is crew yours to command? But the wind rises and clouds gather on the horizon. Your crew looks to you, Mariner. Will you survive this challenge of the sea? Or will your proud vessel be made driftwood, as have so many others before? But the mirror shows many things, and not all of them come to pass. Of Mithrandir, at least, the vision is clearer. Why here the Windlord rests at the rear of the garden? Tell him what you have seen. Why, she's really perceptive because she was looking the other way when Gwaihir landed. 
Well, what do you expect out of Galadriel? I have carried Gandalf before now, and if he yet lives, I will carry him again. I will send out the sharpest sighted eagles to seek him on the very every corner of the land, and I will fly until I have learned what befell him. If he is to be found, I and my kin will find him. Return to the lady and tell her, I will do this. All right. Return to the lady. Hey, okay. there you are. I know that Gwahir will find Mithrandir, if he is to be found. Haldir will show you this place, Fine Sea. I will call for him. Anything else before I depart? You have my thanks. The Lady Galadriel can see much in her mirror, but it is not known to her or any power whether what she has shown you will come to pass. One day, perhaps, you will look back on your long road and make sense of what she saw today. Only time will tell such a thing. I thank you for your service that you have provided to my people, and may the light of the elves shine upon your path and guide your steps aright. For those unfamiliar with the God of Dream, we shall name you Friend, and allow you to enter our fair homes. Okie dokie. You are welcome within Rothlorien, and may visit the hill of Kerin Amroth. You are welcome here, as you have shown your friendship and demonstrated your efforts against the orcs and other dangers of Moria. Pass beneath the eaves of the forest to the northeast and travel to the hill of Kerin Amroth in the center of Lothlorien. It is both beautiful and peaceful, and Melwyn will be pleased to tell you some of its history. Look for her by the archway west of the hill of Karen Amroth, far to the northeast, and here inside the forest. All right, let us then speak to Melwyn and be able to be in a place where the sun is shining. Yay! Ah, here's Melwyn. Welcome to Karen Amroth. Few only have had the joy of seeing this place. You have seen this place in these fading times, its beauty a remnant only of the majesty it once held. For on the mound of Amrath, Lord of Lorien built this house in the days before his love was lost and he himself vanished from Middle-earth. It is said that when the south wind blows upon the hill, if you listen to the sound of the gulls, you might hear still Amrath calling, calling for his lost love Nimrandel, but she never came back. No one pauses a moment, but with a light laugh she recovers herself. <laughs> Don't look sad, Pine Sea. Karen Amroth should be a reminder of happier days. Walk upon the grass and be joyful. Your sorrow will not follow you here. All right. A moment, friend, before you go. Uh, you should know that you are not the only hobbit that has come to Lorien in recent days. In fact, I understand that you are known to these hobbits and their friends, and all will be pleased to see you. Frodo Baggins is resting with some of the members of the company on the crest of the hill. I don't know what Aaron has brought him to the Golden Wood. Of it, you should be entrusted with the knowledge of it. But I am sure that they will be pleased to see you. Hmm. Now I have to remember, have I ever met Frodo? Because I, see, I know I, of course, came to Rivendell after the intro and all, when I ended between books three and four of the epic. So I obviously had to come then. And of course, I had the visit with Boromir and all that. But, hmm. I try to think if I actually met Frodo in all of that. Oh well. I suspect that the storyline is not going to take that into account. Ah, 
Speaking of Frodo, Boromir has gone off by himself. I don't think that he trusts the elves here. Well, yes, I have do recall that Boromir isn't exactly one who automatically grants his trust, especially after what happened in Cardalon. We have come such a long way, haven't we? Ah, fine, see. When Nilwyn told me that another hobbit had come to Lothlorien, I had no idea that it was you. We have each traveled such a long way, haven't we? There is still a long way to go, but here in Lothlorien I have found it difficult to worry too much about the road ahead. You will have to tell Sam and me oh, what has happened since we parted. It feels like a lifetime has passed since the meet leaving Rivendell, and several at least since we have seen Bag End. Uh, but Sam doesn't have seem to be as surprised to see you as I am. You have become the chief conspirator in another conspiracy, have you, Sam? Hmm? I don't know what that's all about. Hello there. Me? A conspirator? Ha! It's not like that at all, Mr. Frodo. And you know that I'm not cut out for keeping secrets, despite your teasing. It's just that so many queer things have happened to us already, and this place being so elfish and all, it just just about any given up, being surprised by anything out of the ordinary happening. And here comes Pinesy out of the woods, walking big as you please. These elves have never had so many hobbit visitors before, I imagine, and it seems to me they find it as funny as we find them. You should find Mr. Merry somewhere around the hill, Pinesey. I know that he'll be pleased as punch to see you. He's taking out one of his walks and may be resting in one of the private gardens along the perimeter now. Private gardens along the perimeter. Alright, uh, that will be this way. Ah! I think I found Mr. Mary. Bine Gweloth. I did not think to run into you here. I can tell you that. Yes, Pippin is around here somewhere, taking a nap, I believe. Oh, no, don't wake him. We'll have plenty of time to catch up, I imagine. Lothorian is so peaceful. It's hard to remember how hard our road will be, and has been. I wonder if you might track down Boromir. He doesn't seem to ha be having as good a time as here as the rest of us. I think it's impatient to get going again, but maybe seeing you again will cheer him up. I last saw him in the northeast outskirts of the great clearing from which Karen Amroth rises. Mm, well, I'm not too sure how much he'd be doing. Okay, he's impatient to get going. Well, seeing that he's probably wanting to get back to Minas Tirith, I can understand why he might be a little bit impatient. Oh, well, uh, listen, head on. And find Boromir. I believe that Boromir is up this rise somewhere. So let's climb up. It looks like one that is easily traversable. Thank you. Hmm. Let's see if we can find Boromir anywhere around here. Ooh, up this way. Up this way. Ah! Here he is! The halflings are too trusting of these elves. <laughs> oh, well. It is most strange to see you here. Has Eriador been made safe already? Well, pretty much. Is that why you're safe? Yes. I am sorry, Pinesy. My words were born of frustration, not a dislike. Every hour that we spend in idleness here is an hour during which the shadow draws closer to my city. Yeah, I thought he wanted to get closer to Minas Tirith. I have seen little of Aragorn and even less of Gimli. The dwarf seems to have gotten over his distrust of elves easily enough. Even now he's off with Leglos atop one of the trees at the crest of the hill of Karen Amroth. Uh, speak with him and see it for yourself. All right, fine. I will go up another tree. Ah, yep, here they are. 
This flat is quite high, isn't it? Uh, yes, I agree. It is high. Well, can't be too much higher than a mast of a ship, right? By Durin's beard, I did not expect to see you again so soon. But I am glad to be surprised. Legolas has been showing me the woods of Lothlorien and the majesty of these trees, so like the stone-carved pillars beneath the mountains, filled the dwarves with amazement. But even in this land of marvels, the lady is the greatest one of all. Oh yes, remind me about those trees in the second hall. Still, I am ready to return now to the ground, if you ask me. The trees are best admired from below, rather than up amongst the branches. Mm, Alright, yeah. You think they're missing rigging ropes? We are just about to search for more patrolling orcs. Why not come with us? What do you think, Legolos? Is there room in our party for a third? Surely Pine Sea will enjoy seeing the beauty of the woods, and the possibility of hewing an orc or three will just sweeten the deal. All right, what do you say about that, Legolos? I would be delighted if you were to join us. The beauty of Lothorian is best when shared, though we must all remain alert even when walking amongst the trees of Lorien. For the orcs of Moria have come down out of Nondurian and are a able to sneak past the borders on occasion. Let me know when you're ready to go. Well, there is absolutely no time like the present. Though the memory be now dim, of old, elves and dwarves were close in friendship. Legolas of Mirkwed and Gimli the dwarf, through shared hardship, have rekindled the old bonds. Even now they look for orcs to slay beneath the eaves of Lothlorien. Megovanen. Are you ready, Pinesy? It is possible that no further orcs have crept beyond the borders, but if any have, we must be prepared to do battle. Come then, I will show you the way. All right, show me the way. This way, my friend. Get on with showing me, then. I, too, heard tales, but they were not of the same sort, Legolos. Ooh, old friends. I, I missed part of the conversation there. Ooh, well. Well, I don't see anything. And the doors are renowned for their sharpness. Yes. What are you shooting at, Legolas? Well, I guess we'll find out in a moment, right? Hmm. A dead orc. Hey, save some for the rest of us, Legolas. <laughs> you and Pine Sea will have your chance, Gimli. That orc was just a scout. Here they come. Uh oh. All right, there you go. Ah, add another to my tally. Let's press on. These was remnants of the troops still within the woods. Oh, there may be yeah, some. Yeah. Continue along. Oh. My axe delights in it. But this dwarf is saddened at the sake of you. For your sake and the sake of the lady. Alright. Hmm. What say you, Gimli? Do your dwarf eyes detect more orcs nearby? Aye, their orcs be close. But it's like my nose that tells me. Ha 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 ha. Oh. Here, let, let's go. Ah. Oh, more of them. All right. All right. What do you say about that? 
You are not, not. Oh. You are no ma. The orcs are dead. Okay. Ha! Huh. The conversation was quick. You words do not suit you, my friend. You are gone long without learning the meaning of courtesy. Too many dwarves have come around. Another has come to our borders, Pine Sea, and is asking for you. Out of respect for you, Pine Sea, and as a courtesy for the good that you have done to us, I have been told to find you and send you to the eaves of the wood. A stranger has arrived on our borders. In these unusual times, such a visitor to Lothlorien would, be, would have been seen only once. This stranger is a dwarf, and he is asking for you. All right. Uh, let us go. Ah, this way. What dwarf would willingly come to this place? Oh, don't take it to heart, Gimli. Neither of our kindreds has been friendly for a while. Yeah, all right. He is welcome to visit Casa Doom if he pleases him. Well. Tie on the blindfold myself. Oh, ooh, oh, oh, that was that. Oh, Gimli, Loin son, ah, is that you, Bosi? Ah, you are a long way from the Iron Hills. Things are not going well for the Iron Garrison in Khazadum, Pine Sea. Mazak still rules much of the depths and many of the levels of the strongholds of Zabagatho, and many good dwarves have fallen to his forces. Some, like my own son Bori, are now captives, or worse. I cannot bear to think what torments they may have suffered behind the walls of Zabagatho. Still, the dwarves of the Iron Garrison struggle to reclaim the hidden caverns, but for every beauty that is unearthed, two evils seem to spring forth from the depths. I have come to enlist the help of the ruler of these Gelf Lords. If Celeborn of Lothlorien wishes to reap the benefits of friendship with the dwarves, he must reciprocate in kind. You are trusted by these elves, Pine Sea. Tell the warden this century of our plight. Perhaps they will listen to you. Hmm? Well, what do you say? We will bring this dwarf to speak with Celeborn Pinesy, but you will be held responsible for him. You will be accountable for any and all of his actions while he remains within the Golden Wood. Come with me. Well then, are you ready? Well, what do you say, Bosey? For the sake of the Iron Garrison, I have put up with the indignity of being blindfolded during the passage here, Pine Sea. But my people can teach the elves of this place something of a courtesy were they to visit Hazadoom. Let us see if the ill manners of the elves springs from their lord. All right. Such indignities will be forgotten if Celeborn will help the Iron Garrison. Lord Celeborn and Lady Galadriel are most gracious. They will listen to your request. Aye, but will they do more than listen, I wonder? It is said that the Lady of these woods wields a terrible power and is no friend of dwarfs, said by those who know little or nothing about the Lady Galadriel, Balsy. Her power lies in wisdom and in kindness even for those who mistrust her. This way, please. All right. Let us go. Wonderful. Nothing like having branches in the way as you are going through an area where you could just fall over if you don't look well. Welcome to Lothlorien. I am at your service, Lord Celeborn and Lady Galadriel of Lorien. If you know of the Iron Garrison, you may know the troubles that we have befallen to us. I know that one who enters Moria would expect to find troubles. I should be surprised to learn that it was not the case. Would you say the same if it were your home that needed reclaiming? 
Was the danger that came from home or of my own making? Much resistance must have overcome if the elves and dwarves are to have peace. I have thought of the elves. I see that I was wrong, and you are content to live in seclusion until all else is destroyed. Perhaps you should tell us what hardships the Iron Garrison has faced. Yes, well, so I shall. Pine Sea has been a great help to us in the mines. We have won several battles against the orcs, but have always they return, and in greater numbers. Our miners work to unearth new passages, but nameless creatures lurk within the most promising. And now my son Bori has been captured by Mazog, ensnared by Gothor. Gorthol is known to me. I did not know that he had left Mirkwood. I will send members of the Galadrine to aid you in your efforts, Bosi. The times are too dark for the friendship of our peoples to remain lapsed. Come here, Pinesy, and you too, Gimli. My son Lord's decision affects both you as well. The Lady of the Galathrim has much wisdom, and it is in her wish that the dwarves of do not face the darkness of Hazadum unaided. So it will be, and you too shall stand against whatever evils lie now beneath the mountains, Pine Sea, if that is your wish. It is time for you to leave, young one. There is much to be done. Oh no. Does that mean I have to go back to Moria? Well, what do you say? I would have the mines restored, but my road lies with Frodo. I wish that I could help with the Iron Garrison with the reference in Chesedum. The mines have brought me great sadness, but I would have them restored, and the Iron Garrison will need able-bodied dwarves if this is to happen. But I can't. My road lies with Frodo, and I will see this errand through before I return to the mines. The need of the Iron Garrison is great, but Gloin's son does not turn aside from one charge to begin another. <sighs> I am stuck by the thought, Pine Sea, that Bosi's tidings may not have been unknown to the Lady Galadriel. At my first meeting with her, it seemed to me that she offered me a choice. A choice between continuing the quest and leaving it to others. And here arrives just such a point of decision. Mm -hmm. Blade of Unity. Eh. Eh. All right. Oh. That is my decision. I won't abandon the quest with which I have been charged. I hope that you will give Bosi and the rest of the Iron Garrison the aid that I would have provided if I were there. When the errand of this company is finished, I hope to return to a reclaimed Moria, and your efforts will help to make this possible. Bosi said that he would continue to the Chamber of the Crossroads near Durin's Way in Moria. Go now to him and give him both my regret that I cannot now return and my fervent good wishes for his success. So yes, I need to go back to Moria, which is where you'll find me in the next episode of River and Sea.